So I want to respond to some of the points that Senator Durbin made last week and, and this week. Uh, as he said, three times in the Trump administration, U.S. attorneys were held over. So there is precedent for that. There are three times in which the committees had roll call votes on U.S. attorneys. It's been 28 years. So I acknowledge that while there is precedent, it is rare, it's unusual, but I also have to say it's also rare for the president to nominate a radical pro-criminal prosecutor for U.S. attorney position. Rachel Rollins is the very epitome of a Soros prosecutor. It's generous to call her a prosecutor at all. For those who may not know what the term means, Soros prosecutor refers to the wave of so-called progressive political activists who in the last five years, backed by wealthy liberal mega donors like George Soros, have run for local district attorney positions throughout the country with the express purpose of igniting revolution and destroying our criminal justice system from within. Rollins, like San Francisco's Chesa Boudin and Philadelphia's Larry Krasner and Los Angeles's George Gascon, are out to destroy the criminal justice system from within. That's not hyperbole. That's not my language. She literally said in an event last year when she was speaking about what she calls an unjust criminal justice system that her purpose as a prosecutor is to, quote, dismantle it from the inside, end quote. In March 2019, shortly after being sworn in as district attorney, Rollins also said in an interview that she was, quote, going to battle against the U.S. attorney over three areas where she didn't think we should be prosecuting criminals at all. Immigration, marijuana, and opioids. Let that sink in. The local district attorney decided that her mission was going to be to try to stop the United States attorney from doing his job and enforcing the law on matters like opioids. Now she wants to be given that job. In an effort to indict our entire criminal justice system as hopelessly beyond saving, Rollins, just like Boudin and Krasner, created what they called a Truth, Justice, and Reconciliation Commission. In founding that organization, they wrote the following, quote, the thing we call the justice system in the United States has been a cruel and oppressive force of injustice for all marginalized communities. Ms. Rollins went on to say, Quote, this isn't a bug in the system, but a feature. It's operating exactly the way it was designed and built to function. An indictment of the very criminal justice system she now seeks to lead on behalf of the United States. But she's not just saying crazy things. She's put her pro-criminal agenda into practice. Even before she became a district attorney in Boston, she put out a list of 15 crimes that, by default, she will not allow her prosecutors to pursue without supervisor approval. That list includes things like trespassing, disorderly conduct, breaking and entering, malicious destruction of property, threats, resisting arrest, and even drug trafficking. She has issued that list as the do not prosecute directive once she took office. That's right, in the midst of a national drug crisis with more than 90,000 of our fellow Americans killed by a drug overdose in the last year alone, Joe Biden's nominee for U.S. Attorney openly says that she does not believe that we should prosecute drug possession with intent to distribute of subjects like fentanyl and heroin. Rodden likes to claim that avoiding prosecution for criminals makes them less likely to be prosecuted for crimes in the future. Circular reasoning, akin to closing your eyes to crime before excitedly declaring that you see no crime at all. But the fact that violent crime in Boston was decreasing before Rollins became DA, and now it's increased ever since. In 2020, Boston homicides increased by 38%. Drug crimes have increased as well. It's not surprising then that Rollins' jurisdiction has seen enormous increases in drug overdose deaths since she's been in office. When Rachel Rollins first became the district attorney for Suffolk County in 2019, opioid overdose deaths in Suffolk County were declining. Since then, the county's opioid overdose deaths have become the fastest growing overdose death numbers in Massachusetts, far outpacing 
the neighboring counties in and around Boston. Ms. Rollin appears to measure success as a prosecutor not by how many victims and innocent people she protects, but rather by how many criminals she keeps from facing consequences. If she's confirmed as the U.S. Attorney, the cartels and the gangs that are fueling violence and death in our communities will be gleeful. If Rachel Rollins wants to advocate for criminals to be released instead of for the law to be enforced, there's a place for her in our government. It's called the Public Defender's Office. But with Rollins as a prosecutor in name only, the criminals have two advocates in the courtroom, the prosecution and the defense, while the victims of crime would have none. And finally, I just want to mention that it's not just her radical pro-crime stances that make her unsuited for this office. She also appears to have a serious lack of judgment and temperament problems as well. In one totally bizarre episode, Boston media reported an apparent instance of road rage by Ms. Rollins in a shopping mall parking lot on Christmas Eve last year. According to a complaint filed with the Boston Police Department against Ms. Rollins, she tried to use her SUV to force another vehicle out of the merge lane, threatened to write the driver a ticket, turned on her sirens, which I don't know why a prosecutor has in the first place, and then sped off through a red light. Then, when a local news crew tried to ask Ms. Rollins about the incident two weeks later, she responded by threatening the news crew on video, saying, quote, I'll call the police on you and make an allegation, and we'll see how that works with you. She later tried to justify this by saying she thought the news camera was a weapon. It is a truly bizarre case. But it's just another example of how far outside the mainstream this nominee is. Her personal judgment is in question, but there's no question that her professional judgment is terrible. So while I will grant that it is unusual to have a recorded vote in this committee or on the floor, it is also unusual for President Biden to have submitted as a nominee to be the United States attorney who consistently sides with criminals. And our responsibility as a United States senator is to ensure that we do not confirm pro-criminal activists into the office of United States attorney. Mr. Chairman. 